What's up, everybody? Welcome to Gojo with Mike Golick Jr. That is me. With me, as always, super producer Brandon Newman on the ones and twos, and my dad, Mike Golick Sr. Uh, dad, is your national nightmare over yet? When does mom come home? Uh, she doesn't come home till Monday, but you know how it is when I'm alone. I mean, there are parts of it that are good and parts of it that are bad. I am horrible at making my own decisions, and I need your mother for that. So, like, even what to eat. If I go out where to eat, there's so many things I'm horrible on that I have to get a hold of her and say, what do you think? It's it's pathetic. I get it. It's pathetic. But I mean, we're going on 36 years of marriage now. So, you know, that's 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 kind of where we are right now. Brandy, get ready for that and get you to get used to that. Uh, but there is something about, you know, letting the dogs lick the dishes. So then I don't really wash them. I just put them back into the cupboard not really cleaning the house until right before your mother comes home. Then I do a mad sweep. So I just kind of lay in everything for a while. Hopefully she's not watching or listening, which I know is not true because she is. I let everything lay for a while and then clean it all right before she gets home. So I kind of have my own routine. So there's some good and some bad in all of it. Uh, the bottom line is, though, I need her here to to, to kind of function uh, so I really have Hank, my 12 year old pug in charge right now. I'm glad you said what I've been telling people for years. Anytime someone gives you credit and talks about, Oh man, your dad looks so great. He's lost all this weight. It only <clears throat> happens because my mom feeds him and makes him go exercise. Like she is the puppet master pulling all the strings that have put you into this form now, because again, you're still more valuable alive than dead. Well, I am, and that's the key thing. And now I don't want people to think that I don't know how to cook or I don't make myself food. I do. Oh, no. I'm, yeah, you got I'm that. Ver very self-sufficient. I'll do the laundry. I can clean. I, I do a lot of stuff, but I just kind of do it at her guidance, you know, and, and make sure I'm doing it in the right order when she's around. Uh, and, and I've learned, even when she's away, to kind of get into a good routine. Uh, so that's worked out pretty well. But you're right. I mean, that's what I gauge it on. Am I worth more alive than dead? So right now, she's been feeding me well for years, and I've got my weight down. I feel good. Uh, I feel clean. I feel right. Even I'm getting a new knee next February, but that's all That's all part of the thing. But I just know I'm more worth more alive. As soon as I stop being that, that's when I start sleeping with one eye open and wondering when the pillow is going over my head. Yep, those days will come eventually, but they are not here yet. Instead, <laughs> what we've got here right now is a great show. As always, make sure you download, subscribe, rate, review, leave us a five-star rating, check us out on DraftKings YouTube channel and on Samsung TV Plus, DraftKingsNetwork.com, live 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern. I might stop saying it soon, but I need to remind you, just in case you feel like catching up with us live. Uh, plenty to get to today. Things don't seem great in Las Vegas right now for the football team out there, even as the rest of the city gets ready to absorb even more sports, potentially. Uh, we've also got to tap into, at some point this show, Brandon Newman has now gone and really absorbed a lot of Florida. He made the move this last year from Louisville down to Florida and has been absorbing the culture down there, becoming Florida man. And so, Brandon, are you prepared this week to finally dip into Tales from Florida here? Brandon's Flo what have we decided what to brand this segment? Have you figured out what you want to call this? Yeah, I'm going to ahead and call this the Friday's Florida Man News Flash. So we're oh, going to go ahead and round up all the different uh, news sites and sounds from out here in Florida. Uh, Shouts out to everyone out here in the bayou and dealing with the humidity like I am. Um, I'm not really sure what accent a Florida man has. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hit, handle this I, like more towards uh, Tallahassee than anything I, else. Maybe <laughs> head down towards Miami and Cuba a little bit later on in the, as the weeks to follow. I, I was trying to figure out what the hell you were doing. All of a sudden I'm like, what, why is he talking like that? And do we think that's the Florida accent? You know, Florida is filled with a lot of people like you who come in from other states. Right. Who move down there. So it's I, I just transplants. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, you're showing your you're showing your uh, lack of knowledge there. They're called <laughs> snowbirds. They go ahead and come on down from, from uh, Michigan, uh, New York. A lot of Yankees fans around here, uh, you know. We, but we we take anybody, you know what I mean. I know uh, a lot of people don't want to travel to Florida because of you know books being banned and things like that. I don't want to get political, but I'm just saying we'll take you. We'll have Disney World down here and uh, just go and come on. But beware of the Gators. A little tease for for the news update later on today. 
Brandon went from Brian <laughs> Kelly's Louisiana accent to now half speed Jimbo Fisher in Unreal. the body of about two minutes time here channeling Florida man. So yes, that is an exemplary tease for the story that sparked all of this. One of the more insane, honestly, reactions to peril that I've ever heard in my life from one victim uh, down in Florida. So we'll get to that coming up here plenty soon. But in the meantime, Guys, are the Celtics going to do this? Like, all of a sudden, I'm getting a little bit worried about all the stuff we talked because last night, the Boston Celtics came out at home and won a game, which has been about a 50-50 proposition since the right. playoffs started. And with authority, like, Dad, I think Jason Tatum heard everybody because that man played the first 12 minutes or so of that game pissed off in a way that I have not seen him on a basketball court the majority of his career. So, you know, when we went into this series, we all felt Boston's the better team. But Miami was playing, you know, on a, on a hot streak. Miami was just absolutely on fire. Jimmy Butler was was the wow factor. It was he and Nikola Jokic as the two guys that were carrying their teams. And Butler has certainly cooled off. And the Celtics are playing like the hair is on fire, which – you have to do when you put yourself in a position of being down love three, one game away from losing the series. So it's a combination of Miami not playing as well, right? And Boston playing better. I mean, you can look at it. Boston's a three-point shooting team, or they, they love to do that. First three games, they were minus 39. Last two games, they were plus, I think, 54. You know, they were they were raining down threes and, and getting turnovers last night like it was going out of style but then again that's again playing with your hair on fire and knowing what you have to do Miami had 10 turnovers in the first half alone 16 for the game 17 points off those 10 turnovers in the first half and Boston was hitting every three-pointer imaginable in this in, in this game and Jimmy Butler scored his postseason low of just 14 points so you put all that together and you get a 13-point game, which was nowhere near a 13-point game. This was a blowout. This was a, what, 96-72 game at one point in the fourth, 24-point lead. Uh, th this was a dominant game. Miami never led in this game. So there's, as Reggie Miller said after they won their first game, Boston, and made it 3-1, he said there's that faint heartbeat. Well, that heartbeat is growing, and with that is the confidence growing. And now they go back to Miami, and Miami damn well better close this thing out. Because while Boston has lost at home, a Game 7 back in Boston, man, that would be awful tough on Miami. So I agree with what Eric Spolstra said. One game doesn't lead to another. They're all individual games. So you yeah. just throw that away and you move to the next one. I get that you do, but the problem is it's not one game leading to the next. It's the fact that this one game looks like who the Celtics were all season long. And yeah, that's the yeah. confusing part here is there had not been an eight seed to reach the NBA Finals for a reason. We usually don't see this kind of uh, switch flipped from regular season to postseason, even in this era. For it to be that stark was sort of wild. And this Miami Heat team coming back down to earth, some of that's due to injury. Like, man, Kyle Lowry had it rough last night. Yep. So he had yep. to go out there and start in place of Gabe Vincent, who was injured and in street clothes on the sideline of this game. And Kyle Lowry was the one. He early on, Jalen Brown was going at him. He was getting turned around on defense and really struggling out there on the courts, looking his age. And so you combine it with that attack there. And then, Dad, I think Derek White deserves a lot of credit, right? Yes. He's a second-team yes. All-NBA defense player. Showed that on the defensive end, but six of eight from three. But yep. I give a lot of that credit, again, to Jason Tatum. Because so many of those early shots were Jason Tatum being aggressive, getting to the rack, and then some incredible kickout passes that got him open looks early. And with these shooters, once they get that feeling early, you saw then Derek yep. White late closing out the first quarter with the buzzer beater off a little bit of a step back, making some tighter contested threes towards the end, but had already gotten into that rhythm because he had gotten wide open looks. Like the whole engine works when Jason Tatum works. And the fact that now Jason Tatum, who was what, you know, third or fourth in the MVP voting this year, is playing like that guy again. Dad, what are you more comfortable betting on? The fact that Jimmy Butler can get back to the form that we've seen all this playoff run and close out this game at home in Miami, 
or that the Boston Celtics just remembered who they were and now appear to be the better team and Miami turned back into a pumpkin. I, I still think it leans toward Miami because you had a team down three zip and now can they be consistent enough to win four in a row? Uh, like like Boston has gone two in a row. This, quite honestly, is their fourth time staving off elimination. They had two times they did it against the 76ers and now two times here, and they still have to do it two more times. So that's the question to me. They looked great these last two games, but can you look? Now they got to double it up. They got to look great in four games, not just two. So I think a big swinger for me is going to be Gabe Vincent. Is he going to be ready to go on Saturday with that ankle sprain? Because you mentioned it, Kyle Lowry, five points, four turnovers in 31 minutes. I mean, that was that was horrible. So, and Gabe Vincent's your third leading scorer on that team. So, getting him back is going to be huge. And, and I guess that's my biggest question for Boston. They have found this, but will it stay for two more games? Will they continue the dominance in the three-point land? Or will it be a game where they're just not falling? You know, and that's what cost them in the first three games. Those shots weren't falling. But I agree with you. It is it is all Jason Tatum. So can he do it for two more games? I mean, it's a lot of pressure to come back from. But you could see the kind of the shift a little bit. And I, I would imagine there's some people in Miami going, uh-oh, could they pull this off? There's a lot of people going, uh uh-oh, because if they pull this off, again, Jason Tatum is going to have receipts for life on all of us. Dad, I wanted to ask you this question about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown because we're giving a lot of credit rightly last night to their performances. Jalen Brown finally gets it going from beyond the arc again. I think he was like three of five. Had really been struggling, but did what we saw Jason Tatum do in a prior round when he had been going through a shooting slump and just kept on working through it. Finally hit pay dirt here. But with both of these guys, the question's been consistency. Can we expect these kind of aggressive performances night in and night out from dudes that have been through playoff battles before, who have been tested, who have gone up against the LeBron Jameses of the world, chewed up and spit out Kyrie Irving from inside their locker room and said, we'll do it our damn selves here. And now have arrived here at a point where they're both due big paydays. We ask the questions about their future. My question is, and, and you've played with some serious stars during the course of your NFL career career that Eagles defense you were on like what is the difficulty for a star player trying to go out there and do the things they're capable of night in night out because I think that's the frustration for a lot of us on the outside is we look at these guys and the ability especially Jason Tatum and say why is this not an every night thing when physically and clearly basketball skill set wise you're so capable and we've seen so much of that well, an every night thing for 82 games now, I know a lot of guys don't play 82 games, is a lot. It's a lot to ask to go out and do that. Now, I know people will bring up back in the day, you know, Jordan played 82 games. A lot of guys played 82 games. There wasn't this resting that went on uh, with the, the science of it will do your body better if you sit out a couple of games and this and that. So I, I think that's the one part of it is to consistently be that guy. That's why these teams started, you know, these players started building, for lack of a better term, super teams so you could rely on somebody else. So it wasn't all on you all the time because then if you fall into that and you have an off night, what happens? You know, do you just say, oh, well, hell, that's it. You know, our, our top guy is off. You know, luckily we had great players, like you said, in Philly. If if Reggie wasn't dominating all the time, there was Jerome Brown or there was Seth Joyner or there was Eric Allen. There are others on a team to pick up when the, the ones you count on the most maybe aren't aren't having it. So that's that's what – but the one thing you can always be, even if you're – and Tatum showed it, missing shots and then hitting shots in the fourth quarter late. The one thing you can always be is that guy that still draws the attention – so whether your shots are falling, you can get your teammates involved. And that's what Jason Tatum does. But now it's your backs are completely against the wall. He has to do it. He did it twice. He has to do it two more times. And all it takes is that one time for those threes not to fall. Because that's been the difference, right? I mean, it's been the three-point. Jason Tatum is a great player. I think him and Brown are going to be back uh, making all their money. Uh, but they, they're living on the threes right now. The threes and the turnovers were the deal last night. So Miami has two games to play like they played of old in the first three games just to steal one and move on to the finals. 
it, it's getting interesting though for sure because while a lot has relied on Tatum, Tatum is young. These remember these stars are young on this team, but they have a lot of playoff experience. I guess that's the thing is, and I think that's why it's frustrating is. They're young physically. So what you talked about with some of the attrition, like LeBron James, we talked about it. He's old. He's 38. Of course, we can't see him follow up a 30-point first half with a 30-point second half in a closeout game because he just doesn't have that kind of gas in the tank anymore. Jason Tatum is young enough to go out there and should be physically able to sustain this course, especially because he's not asked to solely be the guy in an offense where Jalen Brown and all these guys still go out here like this, but he's got all the experience. Like, Dad, I always remember whether it was guys who were rookies in the NFL or even freshmen in college. Once you get like seven or eight games in the season, the line always was in the locker room. You're not really a freshman anymore, especially if you've been playing. You're expected to go out there and handle your business. You're a valuable part of this team. These guys, are they're the playoff leaders. They always talk about having a veteran presence for that stuff. You got your young core, and maybe there's something too. And I think I saw Bamani Jones and Dominique Foxworth talk about this, how early you get to that in your timeline and how that affects your perception of what's attainable and what's not to you in the NBA. But I think that's the frustration is they should have the knowledge and understanding that comes with three uh, Eastern Conference Finals trips in four years in an NBA Finals but also the youth and the energy physically to be able to go out there and make this a more consistent thing. Because like you said, irregardless of shots falling, that doesn't stop Jason Tatum from going and demanding the ball and saying, I'm going to create for my teammates the way he did last night. Listen, I agree. And I I think everybody was scratching their head saying, how are you down three zip? How does Miami take the first two games in Boston uh, with all that talent that Boston has and is depending on what they can keep together with the salary cap and such, their window is going to be open for a little while if they keep that core together. I mean, Horford's the the exception being 36 years old. I believe everyone else is basically under 30. So, I mean, th- this can be a team that's already been one of the upper teams in the Eastern Conference and should be able to stay that way. So, to me, it's been more surprising. I know we talk about Jimmy Butler and, and what he's done, but to me – the more surprising thing has been Boston losing the first three games of that series just by by not hitting their shots and not playing well, and especially that game three just looking so lethargic, you know, before they went down three zip of, of, of not playing with, again, I use the term, with your hair on fire, knowing it's we had a hell of a lot better chance at 2-1 than three zip, and they, and they just were – it was a no contest in that game three. But they've done it now, but there is – the thought process. So when you go back to Miami now, if all of a sudden again, those threes aren't falling because that's how they've won these two games, forgetting what they've done overall. This is what's going on now. So are they going to have to find another way to win if those aren't falling? Last year, they had one of the best defenses around it and one of the best in the playoffs. This year, I think at one point they were 10th of the playoff teams in defense, but their I- defense is playing better now. I was going to say, that's what's shown up as of late, too. Active hands, creating turnovers. That's why, to me, the threes feel maybe not sustainable at this rate, although, again, this is who they were. Like, them and Miami shot basically the same percentage, about 40% from beyond the arc last night. But Boston did it on 10 more attempts. They've killed you with volume. They were second in threes attempted behind Golden State this year. And that comes from points off transition when the other team misses and you're rebounding the way Boston was creating turnovers the way that they were anytime Miami tried to get clogged up in the lane so all of those things work to that end and now got them in that position I think part of this too is sort of the difference between basketball and football that shows up in the frustration with Tatum where in football you can be schemed out the other team can try and do things to mitigate you whereas in basketball we get frustrated because what's stopping you from calling for the rock and saying it's my time now all right so now that the celtics have thoroughly scared all of us by calling for the ball and ramming it straight down the miami heat's throat jimmy butler went off for his playoff low in points last night all this swirling dad i ask you and brandon i'll loop you in on this too Dad, do you have the courage to join Charlotte Wilder and Celtics in seven, or do you still think Miami wins this series? No, I still think Miami wins this series. Again, Boston looked great for two games, and we have seen, while it's 0-150 as far as coming back from down three uh, three love, 
We have seen teams take it to six games, and we have seen a few teams take it to seven games. So this isn't a first, and I just think Miami can get one of these last two and move on and keep it at 0 and 151. I do appreciate that you've gone love and tennis scoring for yeah. this series every time we've talked about it today. I know, yeah. I don't Brandon, know. Brandon, where are you at on this? Are you Celton 7 with our friend Charlotte? You know I am. I got to support Charlotte Wilder every chance I get. And I think she's going something with that Celtics in 7 thing. That defense is locking down that heat. They don't even know where they're – I tell you what, if the Heat don't look like an eight seed and the Boston Celtics don't look like a one seed for the first time in this series, I think that's going to continue. Can't wait to see the Boston Celtics and the Denver Nuggets in the finals. I, 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 I don't even know what to say. You know what? It's better than Brandon's British accents that he's tried on the show before, so this actually demonstrates some improvement. Yeah. I'm pretty proud okay. of him. Well, I should. Okay. All right. Uh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do, what do you... Shh. I think you're onto something, Mike, because I think a Celtics fan might be more... have a little bit more British accent, maybe a little Irish accent, maybe. Oh, no. Celt- <laughs> Celts in seven? I... I need to apologize to everyone for what's gone on here. Um, honestly, I'm, I, 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 I'm feeling kind of froggy about smashing the Celtics seven button. Really? Yes. It, it's it's so weird. And the other night, I was so convinced. Hey, Miami's just got to win one. But I think that injury, and Dad, you mentioned it. It really seems like it's going to hinge on what that injury for Gabe Vincent looks like. Because outside of that, Boston seems to finally have just remembered they can play up to the talent that's all over this team. And for the Miami Heat, outside of, what, the Knicks series? It's not like they've had a bunch of like tightly knotted contested series like this where it's looked difficult. So I think I'm tepidly going to start shifting some money towards Celtics in seven. I think well, that, I'm going to start that, doing that. that. You can't do that. You're in or out. You either are going with the Celtics in seven. You can't tepidly start shifting over. I'm going with Miami. Brandon is going with the Celtics in seven. I don't know what the hell I'm doing with that accent. Make a decision. Make a decision. All right. You know what? Yeah, cheerio, Mike. Make a decision. Are you up to Celtics or with Boston? Or are you over there with the Miami Heat? Fine. You know what? Freaking out. One and one fifty. Let's go, Boston. Somehow they're going to pull this off. Um, I have no idea. How, well, I do have any idea how they're going to do it playing basketball the way they've played basketball all year long. And I'm going to believe that that overrides the sample size that we've seen in the postseason from the Miami Heat, who are banged up and now going to have a major decision to make about what starting lineup they trot out there because I don't think you can put Kyle Lowry back out there and try and have it work out nearly as well. So I don't know if that means integrating Caleb Martin in a different way or what, but you're going to have to make a change there because that was not the answer. And then Jim. Jimmy Butler is going to have to come out and do his best Jason Tatum game five impression. We're going to see who actually has the ability to string that together. But yes, I will ride over here with our friend Charlotte. Uh, I will go down with that ship and now jump late on the bandwagon to potential history because that's what I do uh, and that's who I am at my core. I also, uh, guys, in a second, have to tell you about something I'm deeply ashamed of because I've realized in the last couple of games, as everyone yesterday on the internet was reading the riot act to Chris Minix from Sports Illustrated for going on the Rich Eisen show and talking about how the Denver Nuggets were boring to cover and all these things about how that team's not interesting and everybody went off on him and we had Charles Barkley lamenting the way that the NBA is covered. I had a moment yesterday that I am deeply embarrassed about that does in fact indicate that I am part of the problem. But first, First, we got to tell you about something with our friends over at Omaha Steaks. Because, Dad, I know Father's Day is coming up here. And I always tell people who struggle to find gifts for their dad, for their husband who is a father, anything like that. My advice is always to make it edible. And going with the grill never hurts because I, I've told this story before. But when we went away for high school football training camp, Dad, you were always the grill master. You would come along, drive up. It was a place called Camp Fuller. And you would be the guy grilling the pit boss on the side, making food for all of us. So you always felt as comfortable in front of the grill as anybody I've known. Listen, there is nothing like throwing a slab of meat on a grill. I've already done it here. And I will do it with my Omaha steaks as well. So I hope I get those for Father's Day so I can put them back on the grill. 
I'm a big fan of that, and that would make any father happy. He's the master of his grill. Get to it. Yes. It's, it's that simple. You have joy that you can send your father that he can then throw on the grill. It's easy and fun to do. You get the smells. You get the sights and sounds. You get to clack the tongs together. It's all beautiful. <laughs> and And if you do it with help from us... By heading over to omahasteaks.com and using promo code GOJO at checkout, you can get $30 off your qualifying order. Packages that include fork tender, bacon wrap filet mignons, other oh. gourmet grillables like air, bo- uh, air chilled boneless chicken breasts, burgers, jumbo franks, and a ton of other combinations. They've also mm. got dessert, which matters a lot to us, for delicious gourmet caramel apple tartlets. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to pause to wipe the drool. Because that's oh. a real thing that's happening in my life right now. And so, uh, yeah, check out all those packages. They've got tons of great built-in stuff already, so you don't even have to think about it. They're going to go and do the work curating for you there because dads want steak. It is that simple. You can see my father here right now. So whether he is your actual father, your father-in-law, or a father figure, he's the guy who's always ready to step up when you need him most. Father's Day uh, is coming up, so show him the love with the only gift that's as unforgettable as he is. The mouthwatering perfection of Omaha Steaks, from perfectly aged, oh-so-tender steaks to hand-selected gift packages, Omaha Steaks can make it easy to give Dad what he really wants. Order today, save $30, uh, $30 off with promo code GOJO, and every purchase is backed by their unconditional money-back guarantee. Minimum order may be required. See site for details. Now, guys... What happened yesterday is during our show meeting, we get on a call for a little bit. And last night, as we're sitting there, I get the notification on Instagram that LeBron James is going live on Instagram. And so I immediately (laughs) start ignoring you guys, click over there, and was horrified to see that all he was doing was showing an IG live of Bronny's graduation from Sierra Canyon. Having a proud dad moment, probably doing it on an iPad in the crowd like every person above a certain age in the United States. And I clicked off in frustration because I realized, dad, I'm part of the problem. All that stuff about people buying into the NBA just for the gossip and not for the basketball, I absolutely sunk into that because I was hoping LeBron James was going to be on IG Live, giving up more of the tea like he did in that post-game press conference the other night. And I'm ashamed of myself for it. Yeah, I'm ashamed of you too, quite honestly, because I was there for that moment. Um, and th- then on the other side of that, I mean, there are things as a father, and you don't know about this yet, Mike and Brandon, you're going to find out as your kids are young. When you have to go to your kid's dance thing in middle school or choir or whatever, man, let me tell you, That is something only a parent should do. That should not ever be filmed for anybody else. And I'll take it all the way to graduation. I'm proud of you guys when you graduated, but who the hell wants to see some other kid walking and graduating? You know what? I mean, it's just, it's, it's long and it's boring. So I, I, now again, LeBron and Bronny are unbelievably famous right now. So maybe some people wanted to see it, but oh my God. I mean, it's torture enough for a parent to have to go. Again, we're proud as parents of you, you know, when you're in third grade singing, you know, at some show or Sydney, Sydney or Jake dancing or Jake just standing there and doing nothing like yeah. you normally did yeah, in those situations. Say, usually, usually it but, was me trying to sing, even though it was bad. And yes. Jake just letting everybody else go ahead and mask. Uh, it's exactly right. It's exactly right. So. I mean, and and you fell into it. I, how many? I wonder how many people thought exactly the same way you did, and thought, "Oh man, he's spilling some tea over here, and we're getting a friggin' graduation," which I couldn't turn off fast enough. Yeah, it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. And you're right about all the other stuff. Now, for LeBron, it has to be pretty cool because Bronny and Bryce both stratified pretty young as players that were good at what they did. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be tough when you realize, oh, my kid's probably going to go pro in something other than sports. Like, I'm sure it's fun for a while, but watching bad youth sports, and I don't know, Brandon, you're getting ready to start this journey soon enough. A lot of our friends who have like six and seven year olds, I'm seeing pictures and videos from t-ball practice or soccer practice and stuff like that. Are, Are you are you excited? Like, I know Carter's pretty good basketball wise, right? Does that like get you going a little bit? I'm excited to see the evolution. I am. I, I'm not going to put any expectations on where I think he will go, but 
he looks like he's got shoulder pads on under his t-shirts like i, I just like the body is there the build is there uh for he and mac my my other son i i'm excited to see where it goes i don't want to ex- put expectations i say that again but he is going to be the fastest biggest strongest uh player out there and it's just gonna mean injuries for the other kids so i'm just kind of preparing myself to get talking to from the other parents Wow. Can you say helicopter dad? Holy smokes. Now I did have to deal with other parents uh, during when the boys played lacrosse because Mike was on defense with a long stick and Jake was taller and, and pretty much bigger than everybody except Mike. And Jake was a midi. Jake didn't care as much about ball handling and such. Jake cared about hitting people. And in the, in that league, when you're in middle school, you can't do it as much. But Jake would do it anyway, and he was just bigger than everybody. And parents didn't weren't very happy from the other team about that, Brandon. So, in all honesty, I, if you if your kid is one of those guys, get ready for it because we we went to AAU games where they asked for Jake's birth certificate oh, to the, I, to the Brandon. Yeah. I saw an old man and my father get into a <laughs> knockdown, drag out, screaming match at an AAU basketball game. Because that guy was like full on Danny Almonte questioning my brother's age in the middle of that game, like walking onto part of the court and yelling back and forth at each other. We were in a game, Brandon. We were in a, in a game where some kid got a steal for the other team. Jake ran him down like you see those LeBron blocks off the backboard. Yeah. Jake ran this dude down. Jake not only blocked the ball but sent the dude flying into the wall. There were parents that were yelling for the police to come and and take Jake off the court. And, and Jake didn't do it maliciously at all. He just, as he blocked him, he hit him with his body as well. And it was something because Jake Playoff was 6'4 now. at the time and could run faster than any little kid. So it got to be kind of like a wow moment. But, yeah, parents wanted to call the cops on him. So if your kid dominates a little bit, get ready for some of that fun stuff. Listen, that's where my head is at. I'm I'm just basing it off the information I already have, right? My, Mac is 16 months old and he's off the charts for weight, right? So like he he's like 90 percentile height. Talk about talk about things people don't want to hear about the percentile conversation. Oh, how big yeah. your kid gets over time. No one cares about it but the parents. Well, guess what? Carter's 98 in in weight and and 97 in height and. I, all the, the information I get back from the, the daycares and monastery schools is Carter's great. He's a leader. Uh, everyone loves him. He got moved up to uh, the up bigger class early. Oh, no. But they say oh, no. they say that he wrestles a little bit too much. Like his version of playing is a little bit too much of laying on you and, and moving around. So like I've had to change the way I play them because obviously that's what I do. I just kind of, you know, rough them up. And I don't know. I think I need a daughter to really just like – Wow. mellow me out because right now i just want to throw big bricks at carter and have him do hand Bro- drills my brother in christ have you met my sister there ain't nothing mellow yeah. about that man nothing it's like kevin nothing. durant nothing. it's all gas no breaks when i log on so uh yeah. i would yeah. reconsider yeah. You your offer you. there and 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 watch the the percentile thing again with jake he was six four in like sixth or seventh grade when jake was a baby going through these percentiles a doctor said he was going to be six ten he stopped at six four <laughs> So, you know, don't don't get too caught up in all that stuff, Brandon. But but I do know that's what parents do. I did it. You know, you watch how your kids are moving. And you're like, oh, that's a good move, you know, and, and this and that. Yeah. And as they get older, it's kind of wild to, to, to oh. watch as they grow up. It'll be the best part of your life, though. Watching your kids get involved in things and, and supporting them is, is very cool. You got a lot of that to look forward to. Unless they end up at wrestling or swim meets, then you're in for the longest days known to mankind. Unreal. Yeah. Listen, unreal. as long as I get a steak on Father's Day, I'm good. See, there you go. <laughs> He's got the right idea. So make sure you get your dad's steak on Father's Day. Make sure you're not a jerk when you're uh, parenting your kids at use sporting events. Um, speaking of LeBron in Vegas, though, as we're seeing the entire sports world swirl in around Las Vegas right now, LeBron openly thirsting for a team. The Brady ownership stake in the uh, Vegas Raiders went through the other day. You've got the Oakland A's vote to move to Las Vegas getting voted on next month. Uh, Rob Manfred announced the other day. Dad, it is interesting. So we've seen the Las Vegas Aces, super team, success right. coming there. The Vegas Golden Knights, while they're still in the uh, Western Conference Series, they're deciding who's going to go to the Stanley Cup Final. They got a lead. They've been super successful. 
The Las Vegas Raiders are in an interesting juncture right now where there has been nothing but bad news surrounding this team. It seems like all off season. You had people that wanted to fire Josh McDaniels after year one, it felt like, because of how poorly that team performed. They jettisoned Derek Carr, who had been one of the faces of that franchise during the move. And now this off season, you had Devontae Adams in an article over at the Ringer with Mir and Fader expressing some frustrations with how things had gone on in the team and in their off season. And now you've got the news that Jimmy Garoppolo, who remember his signing with the team was apparently a little bit held up, murky circumstances, ended up having an extra day attached to that. And now we hear the reports that he had had a foot procedure after he had signed and come over with the Las Vegas Raiders and isn't practicing right now. Dad, it, does it feel like Josh McDaniels kind of coaching for his job this year? Because I don't know what the Raiders have to look forward to as they're trying to cash in on all this Vegas love and boost their earnings through going to this city. Oh, I, I think without a doubt. Listen, and, and, and I have always said this, I would never, I don't like, talking about people's jobs and getting fired, but it's the reality of sports, especially for a coach. You're hired to eventually get fired. Josh McDaniels had one other head coaching job in Denver that failed miserably, went back to New England. Now he's in with the Raiders. If they don't make the playoffs, in my opinion, he's going to be gone. And again, I'm not wishing that on anybody, but he's going to be gone. And probably, Mike, will never get another shot as a head coach because you're seeing younger head coaches roll through and he's also unfortunately living up to the stigma of if you're an assistant under Bill Belichick and then try and go on your own, it ain't happening, right? I mean, the only one it happened for really the most successful was Bill O'Brien, yeah. correct? He won some some division titles down in Houston, but others have failed coming out of there. So if it's at not playoffs, oh, I you, think he's going to lose You think he's got to make the job. playoffs to keep his job? Because I just don't think that's possible with this roster. Oh, I agree. That's why I think he's going to be gone. I, I completely agree. Their defense, we talked about the offensive side of the ball with Devontae Adams and Josh Jacobs. Good for him. They didn't pick up his fifth-year option, and he went out and balled, which is phenomenal. Um, but their defense was horrible. Horrible. Well, so and, and they picked up what the, the the edge rusher Tyree Wilson in the in the first round, Michael Mayer in the second round, which can help that offense. But no, I don't see them as a playoff team. So they're not a playoff team, which is why I don't think that can be what ties Josh McDaniels is tied to Josh McDaniels' future because it's not a realistic expectation. Like I did this exercise the other day on uh, the Mina Kime show featuring Lenny, outstanding podcast, where we looked at who the X factor for each team was going to be, non QB or coach in making it a successful season. And that involves defining what success is going to look like for a team. Right. And I think for Vegas, success looks like getting the offense at a place that appears stable for whatever you're going to do in the future. Because Jimmy Garoppolo on that deal he signed, he's a... He's an answer right now. He's a Band-Aid, but he's not in the future. And so it's, all right, do you replace Waller with Michael Mayer? Do you get the offensive line fixed? But more than anything, does that look like a competent output? Because at times last year, despite Devontae Adams' output, that didn't seem to be the case. And Josh McDaniel's an offensive coach. They can't fix the defense in a year. But, Dad, the offense has to look like it's an adult outfit, I think. And you've got to be in the 6-8 to eight win range. I don't think playoffs can be realistic well, in that division they were, for them. They were 6-11 and 11 last year. I mean, so... So do we put a number on? Do they have to be eight and nine? Do they have to be plus two, plus three? Garoppolo's not the long-term answer. Brian Hoyer's your backup. So you, you got Aiden O'Connell, the kid from Purdue, right? So, I mean, is that your future guy or you're going to grab a free agent at some point? So I, I, I don't know where this team is going. And I think whenever they go in a new direction, it will be with a new coach. I think it's going to have to be vibes-based and you deciding, does what you see behind closed doors this season look like the coach you want to potentially lead the next quarterback in the next iteration of your franchise? All right, now that we've left the desert, let's wrap this thing up the way we always do and get to this, that, and the third. Three quick stories to finish off the day. As always, download, subscribe, rate, review. Leave us a five-star rating. And I heard some of the talk out there that we had forgotten the podcast audience as we've been doing live stuff. And that's not the case. We still listen, like this review from Carissa Ann that said, posting my five-star review in sporting of having Brandon on the show as much as possible. Back then, the show she referenced, just like old times, hashtag Brandon Hive, five-star rating. And so with that in mind, 
We want to start off with this. It is, as you've heard from Brandon's accent all show, Brandon dipping into his newfound Florida roots to give us the Florida headline of the week here. Brandon, go ahead and take it away, man. Let's go. Yeehaw! Now I know you guys know about Florida, man. It's been very popular in the news all the way to town. Now I'm going to tell you about a little town called Port Charlotte. Okay, it's about 28 miles north of Fort Myers. Fort Myers is in between Naples and, and, and Sarasota, my hometown. That's where I'm at right now, okay? Now, I know you got the Florida Panthers out there in the hockey team. Well, that's because they have majestic, beautiful Panthers. Wildlife in Florida is so beautiful and great, but one thing they do have is alligators, okay? We like to call them gators out here, okay? And uh, this will happen to the young man in Park Charlotte, okay? He was out taking a leak in a pond it didn't feel like waiting uh waiting for in the bathroom over at the bar at the bantino bar if i'm sp- if i'm correct and uh, saying that correctly okay he went over took a leak took a tumble into the pine guys in about a 10 foot gator got him okay I, I spoiled the, i spoiled the lead but he had no idea what was going on he, he 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 fell in the pond woke up in a hospital bed with his arm gone for about <laughs> from about the uh the elbow down Okay, didn't know what was going on. Uh, uh, basically, the people heard the splashing. They, they wrestled them out. They had somebody come out and put down the gator, guys. Usually, they let gators roam free, and they said if you feed them enough, they won't come after the humans. But obviously, you can't feed all the gators, and and this one got an arm uh, uh, for for a little bite to eat. And and shouts out to that that Florida man in Port Charlotte, uh, young man about twenty eight years old, just w- without an arm today. So that happened on Tuesday. So let me we'll, we'll stack correct a little bit. The man's name is Jordan Rivera. He's 23 years old. The bar okay. Brandon was close is Banditos in Port Charlotte. And yes, this guy, I went and watched the news story attached to it. The calmest dude who just had his arm ripped off in a drunken stupor. Because let's be clear, dude was probably wasted. If he just hit yes. the water and immediately blacked out and was going outside to pee in the water because he didn't want to wait in the line in the bathroom, who among us hasn't seen a long men's room line and decided, no, this is part of the privilege of being able to stand while we pee that I'm just going to go and do this outside? So dude yeah. was a little overserved, fell into the water, woke up, and when asked about it on the news in the hospital, looking down at his arm, said, it's not the end of the world. I'm still here. This is the most relaxed person in the face of danger I have ever met, and I want to follow the rest of this young man's life because clearly fear is not a factor for him. I, I am I'm stunned at this. I mean, and I love Brendan talking about don't feed the gators, especially don't feed the gators humans, okay? Yeah. Don't feed them That's human body parts. Real. It won't be good at all, but I'm with you. The guy was so calm. I, I, I just can't imagine all of a sudden you're taking a pee in a pond and you wake up and you got no arm. I mean, I certainly wouldn't have been that calm. I'd have freaked the hell out if that happened to well, me. Well, when it comes to gator attacks, I don't know if you guys know about this. Maybe this is just the Florida thing. Uh, but when it comes to gators attacks, there's a priority of limbs that gets listed. You get it as soon as you get your driver's license. And and one of the lower things on there is the elbow to the fingertips, especially on your, your hand that you don't use predominantly to touch things with. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's all about perspective. You know, Joe Mazzula talked about uh, visiting terminally ill young children to give himself perspective going into this game. I think perspective on life is one thing that us Floridians have more than anyone. You can say we have it in spades. Dear God, the perspective of this segment, I don't know who it's more offensive to, but we'll find out at some point. Make sure you leave it in the comments and let Brandon know what you thought. We'll have more Florida man coming on the way here. Um, Let's get to that and get away from that accent for the rest of the show. Uh, This courtesy of ESPN's Pete Thamel, college football reporter over at the Worldwide Leader. Iowa Athletic Director Gary Barta is expected to announce his retirement. Dad, Gary Barta had spent the last 17 years at the helm of the Hawkeyes program here, uh, had been mired in controversy as of late. Just like this March, Iowa had to settle a multi-million dollar racial discrimination lawsuit and had state legislators calling for Gary Barta to step down. So I'm sure there's going to be people that think that absolutely led to a part of this. We had heard all of this surrounding the football program where Kirk Ferentz, the longtime coach, was allowed to keep his job Brian Ferris after uh, his son after an underperforming season at the offensive coordinator position also allowed to keep his job that's my first thought dad
that is, I wonder what this means for the leash for Kirk Ferentz in this football program going forward. Well, exactly. When you get a new AD, again, he's 59. He's had that job for, what, 17 years. And you mentioned, you know, that settled with a $4 million lawsuit for 12 former players alleging racial discrimination. The announcement this, you know, just recently from the NCAA about potential gambling violations uh, that right. they're going to have to deal with. <laughs> I mean, so a 26 Twenty six involving twenty six athletes, so we'll see where that goes. But you're right. If a now, are they going to get a guy who's been an AD? Will they get a young AD, or they're going to get an AD that has no association with Ferentz? And Ferentz has been there a long time. We know the football program has been pretty consistent. Basketball has has, has remained pretty consistent with a like Caitlin Clark now. So the women's side of it has yeah. been awesome. But uh, yeah, you wonder how much this is his decision, and how much there's some fingerprints on his back of him getting pushed out. I've already seen so many of the tweets and jokes that this is now Kirk Ferentz's final form to just ascend to athletic director of the program he's manned the helm of as the football coach for a long time. So it, curious to watch there, especially if Iowa underperforms this season relative to expectation or going into the future. What's going to happen there? Gary Barta had also been a guy, had been on the college football playoff committee, had been the one that was in charge right. of going out and speaking to the public. So I think a lot of people got familiar with him there and always is going to be an unpopular to sit position when you're the guy trying to explain what sometimes feels pretty unexplainable. But again, according to Pete Thamel, Gary Barta expected to announce his retirement. Guys, let's get to the third. We talk a lot about reality TV on this show. Usually it's reality dating, but this one definitely piqued my interest. And I want to know if you guys are going to be in on this. Fox is beginning a new celebrity reality show called Stars on Mars. It's hosted by uh, Star Trek actor William Shatner, and it's going to be a wide array of celebrity faces who are here to essentially try and test their survival skills as they, quote, colonize Mars. Essentially, I think everyone saw that movie, The Martian, and then started to get cooking on this one. But, Dad, they've got guys like Marshawn Lynch, Ronda Rousey, Richard Sherman on this show, even disgraced former cyclist Lance Armstrong. Yeah. So are you in on yeah. this? Yeah, they're all, they all had their picture in their, you know, spacesuits getting ready to go, and it's basically... Uh, they must use their brains and brawn or maybe just their stellar social skills to outlast the competition and claim the title of brightest star in the galaxy. No, I'm not. I am not in on this one. I hate the fact that they vote each other off. That means it's going to get petty. It's and that's just why space a lot of people, survivor. That's all it is. Uh, I mean, I, I and I just got done. And, you know, I'm not ever sure about these reality shows, but I did watch that show, Special Forces: World's Toughest Test, which actually Carly Lloyd and Hannah Brown did a great job in. But Mike Piazza was in that one. Dwight Howard was in that one, and I actually watched that, and I thought it was actually pretty good. But they didn't vote each other off or anything like that. That's part of it. I don't like kind of like Survivor. You know, you're you're voting people off. I'm not a big fan of how petty all of that gets. Uh, at times. And I, I, I don't know, Mike, I, I don't see myself diving into the, if I do, I'm going to tell you flat out. If I do, the only reason, the only reason is Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch is going to be, could be incredibly entertaining. So if they're smart and he is entertaining, obviously he's going to last a while in this thing, but that would be the, I'll, so I'll probably peruse it just to see Marshawn Lynch and what he does. Television execs finally figured it out. If you put Marshawn Lynch on the screen, we're going to watch pretty much no matter what it is. Him, Snoop Dogg, and a few others probably occupy that space right now. We hope even though we don't have Marshawn Lynch, you enjoyed watching this. If you did, make sure you download, subscribe, rate, review. Check us out on YouTube and the DraftKingsNetwork.com. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Go Irish. We'll talk to you Monday. Go, go. Boom. Money in the bank.